In the last video, we proved that the velocity vector can be written in these terms, such as r dot times the unit vector e r plus r times theta dot times the unit vector e theta. So to find the acceleration, all we have to do is take the time derivative of velocity. So if we take the time derivative of velocity, we'll get the acceleration vector. And again, we're gonna do the same thing as we did before. We're gonna take the derivative of this and to keep in mind that the unit vectors are changing with time, so we can't just ignore those uh, ve uh, vectors when we take the derivative. So we're gonna do the product rule twice uh, to find the acceleration vector. So take the derivative of the first one, so that's gonna be r double dot, and then we multiply by er. And then we're gonna take the derivative of er, and that's gonna be r dot, E R dot. And now we're gonna take the derivative of this. So I'm just gonna group these together and then take the product rule of that and then do the chain rule of these two. So I'm gonna do plus R dot and then multiply that by theta dot theta. And then we're gonna take the derivative of these. It's going to be R times the derivative of these two values. So that's gonna be theta double dot times E theta plus theta dot E theta dot. So I'm going to rewrite this a bit and plug in the value for er dot. So in the previous video we said that er dot is actually equal to theta dot e theta. So I'm going to plug this into here and then simplify this and group some terms together so we have a, a nicer equation for the acceleration vector. So I grouped these two together, so we got r double dot times er, the unit vector, plus 2r dot theta dot plus r theta double dot times the unit vector e theta, and then we get this last term, which is theta dot times the time derivative of the unit vector e theta. And this equation only has one problem. We need to understand what e theta dot is. So we're gonna basically repeat the process that we did in the previous video. So if you didn't really understand it, then I'm gonna try to explain it a little bit better because I think I was a little hazy on how I explained it before. So in this diagram, we can see that e theta dot is this unit vector, this is the initial state, and then some time later, that unit vector is gonna rotate as the particle rotates with its path and point in a different direction, and it's gonna be dependent on how this uh, delta theta changes over time. So what we can do is actually define this arc length right here. We could define that arc length. So we could say that arc length is s, times the radius, and that's going to be the radius of the unit vectors. As, as we said before, the unit vectors have a magnitude of 1. So we can use t or t plus delta t. It doesn't matter because the unit vector always has a magnitude of 1. And then we can multiply by that angle, which is delta theta. So now we're going to let delta theta get really, really, really close to 0. If we, drew, if we get it really, really close to 0, then we could see in this arc length that the change in e theta points more and more straight and to the left. So we can say that the change between these two unit vectors, if you let delta t go to zero, so we can say that this is going to be the difference between e theta t plus delta t minus e theta of t. And what's special about this, again, if you let delta t go to zero or delta theta go to zero, this change, which is represented right here by this very, very small vector, is gonna point towards the left. And if we define our orientation, so again, if, if delta theta gets very, very close to zero, um, this is also gonna be looking like this. This ERT plus delta T is gonna get closer and closer to ER of T. So we could say that E theta, the change in E theta gets close to zero, it points to the left horizontally, and it has the same direction, or the opposite direction of the unit vector ER. So we could say that the change of the unit vector in terms of theta is equal to the magnitude of those two differences in the negative of ER. So again, see how you, the ER points in this direction, but that small change over here is pointing in that direction. So it points at 180 degrees from ER. So that's why we include this negative sign. So we just flip the orientation of ER to represent the direction of that change in E theta. So now what we could do is actually relate this change in E theta with the arc length that we found earlier. So we could say that the change in E theta equals the magnitude of E theta at some given time times delta theta. 
So now that we have that, we want to relate this back to time because again, we're taking the time derivative, we're trying to find e theta dot. So we can take the ratio with respect to time on both sides and let delta t go to zero. And what we get is that e theta dot, the scalar quantity, is equal to theta dot. Now we want to specify an orientation. So if we look back, the change of theta, if we look at that very small of change e of e theta, it's going to be pointing to, towards the left, which is in the opposite orientation of er. So we can say that e theta dot is equal to theta dot times a negative of er. And that's simply because this purple vector points in the opposite direction of er. So we could say that the direction of the change of e theta is going to be in the opposite direction of er. So this right here is going to be the quantity we're going to plug in into the acceleration equation. So going back to our equation, we can plug in that value. So this is going to equal this. So now what I'm going to do is actually simplify this and collect some terms. So we have a, a value for er and a value for e theta. So this right here is the acceleration of a particle given uh, polar coordinates. So let me read this out. So this says that the acceleration has a value in the er direction, meaning the radial direction, which is r double dot minus theta dot squared. And this right here will give you the radial acceleration. And there also exists acceleration in terms of rotation, and that equals 2r dot times theta dot plus r theta double dot. So basically, those are the equations of motion in terms of polar coordinates. I know it's, it's a little complicated in terms of derivation when it comes to finding the change in the unit vectors, but really all you're doing is finding the arc length and you're finding how ER changes over time. And you relate those two equations and then you take the derivative of those equations to find what it means as E theta or ER changes with time. So hopefully this is helpful. In the next couple of videos, we'll go through some examples on how to use these equations so it becomes more practical. With that being said, I'll see you in the next video.